Okay. Slope intercept form of a line. Can you guys see my screen where it says slope intercept form of a line? Yes. If you pinned her, you have to unpin her. Okay. So the slope intercept form of a line, I don't yes. want you to read anything yet. I'm just going to read this part with you. Um, the slope intercept is the most popular, like Mrs. Palmer said, form of a straight line. Many students find this useful because of its simplicity. One can easily describe the characteristics of the straight line even without seeing the graph because the slope and the y-intercept can be easily identified or read from this form. Okay, the slope-intercept form of the equation of a line, the linear equation written in the form y equals mx plus b. Okay, so here's what I want you guys to write. Kind of right here where it says y equals mx plus b. Can you guys see my mouse moving around? Yes, no? Yes. Oh, okay, thanks. Okay, so write this. Write slope, inter call it slope-intercept form. Okay, and write y equals mx plus b, and then call m, put a little line, a little arrow there saying slope, and b is your y-intercept. Okay, we're going to use this all the time. Slope-intercept form of a line is y equals mx plus b, where m is your slope, and b is the y-intercept. Remember, the y-intercept is where your line crosses the y-axis. You don't have to write the quick notes underneath. I'm just going to start reading them. The slope measures how steep the line is. So you guys already know that. Given two points, the slope is computed as m equals y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. You guys already have that note. Okay. The y-intercept, b, is the point where the line crosses the y-axis. Notice in the graph below, the red dot is always found on the main vertical axis of the Cartesian plane. That is the basic characteristic of the y-intercept. Okay, the y-intercept is wherever your line crosses the y-axis. So for this green line, your y-intercept looks like it's two and a half, up one, two and a half. And for the blue line, your y-intercept is negative one, negative two, looks like negative two and a half. Okay, let's go over some examples how to write the equation of a straight line in linear form, y equals mx plus b. Okay, so we're looking at example one. Write the equation of a line in slope-intercept form if the slope is negative five and the y-intercept is three. Okay, so if they give you m as your slope is negative five and b is three, you're gonna write y equals negative five x plus three. Okay, so I would write this example in right here. Say m equals negative 5, b equals 3. So y equals negative 5x plus 3, right? y equals m, which is negative 5, x plus b, and b is 3. Okay, since this has a negative slope, the line is decreasing, falling from left to right, and it's going to pass through the y-axis at the point 0, 3, because our y-intercept is 3. And remember, our y-intercept, the definition is what is y when x is 0. So that means it's the point 0, 3. That's where it will cross your y-axis. Okay, you guys already knew all of this, too. And having the negative slope, it's going down from left to right. Like, nice, negative. Okay, so here's the line, and it's going to cross at 0, 3. Okay, I want you guys to write example 2 and write this down. Okay, so this will be in your notes. Write the equation of the line in slope-intercept form with a slope of seven and a y-intercept of negative four. And then I want you to write what you think that equation looks like, okay? Slope of seven and a y-intercept of negative four. Go ahead and write what you think that is.
Okay. Um, Mark, can you scroll down because I can't see that. Can you see it now? Uh, yes. Wait, so I just write down all of example two? You're going to write, so far, just this part. Write the equation of a line in slope-intercept form with a slope of 7 and a y-intercept of negative 4. And then I want you to write down what that looks like. Okay, give me a second to write that down. Also, when you just scrolled up again, I can't see it because for some reason when I go to, like, turn on my camera and, like, the mic mute and unmute, it, like, mm -hmm. covers up almost half the screen. Yeah, okay. All right, what, what does that equation look like, do you think? Um, Matthew, are you still on with me? No, I don't have a Matthew. Um, Nathan Snyder, do you want to tell me what that looks like? What are you going to write for that equation? If it has a slope of 7 and a y-intercept of 4. You're going to put it... it Y equals Y equals wait, what is the slope? Seven X plus neg minus four. Good. Yep. Y equals seven X minus four. I'm gonna scroll down to see if he's right. There it is. Y equals seven X minus four. Give me a second. I want to write okay. So if they give you the slope and they give you the y intercept, you can write the equation. Wait, can you right. give me a couple minutes to write that? You don't have to write everything there. I would just write this part where it tells you what the example is. You don't have to write in all of this extra information. I would just write the question, yes, write the equation, and then write what you said, y equals 7x minus 4. Okay, in this case, um, our slope is a positive 7. So that line's going to go from left to right up right? And positive slope, a puff, puff, positive. And it's going to cross my y-axis at negative four, at zero, negative four. And there's the line. Okay. Um, example three, write the equation of the line in slope intercept form with a slope of nine passing through the point zero, negative two. So that's kind of telling you that your y intercept is negative two. So I want you guys to write for example three, what do you think the equation of that line is? The equation of the line with a slope of nine and a y intercept of negative two. I can't. Wait. Okay. Yes, Nicholas. Um, can I say the answer? Yep. Y equals nine x minus two. I'm scrolling all the way down, and there it is. Yes, you were right. Y equals nine x minus two. Okay. Wait, what is wait, how did you do the two points? It gave you, I think it said nine and then what were the other points? It said the slope is nine and the point is zero negative two. So this point zero negative two is just telling you the y intercept is negative two. Because the y intercepts, the definition is what is y when x is zero? So if we have the point zero negative two. If X is zero, then we know this negative two is your Y intercept. So then Nicholas put it in Y equals MX plus B. And it told us that M is nine. And then <clears throat> Nicholas figured out that the Y intercept was negative two. Okay.
All right, you guys have any questions so far? So far, so good? Okay. Yeah. Well, what was that? Yeah, Sorry, I was yawning. Okay. Um, so I'm going to share my screen still, and I'm going to put in um, this video about it, just like I said, because my smart board's not cooperating. So I'm going to let Sal kind of talk about this a little bit. For This is an introduction to slope intercept form. And then this will be helpful too um, for anybody whose internet keeps cutting out to watch this and um, they won't be missing anything from class today. Except why don't I have any volume? Hang on. I have it There's muted. There's an infinite number of ways. But let's see, I could uh, subtract 2x from both sides. I could write this as negative 2x plus y. It, there's a lot of different ways that you can represent a linear equation. So for example, if you had the linear equation y is equal to 2x plus 3, that's one way to represent it. But I could represent this in an infinite number of ways. I could, let's see, I could uh, subtract 2x from both sides. I could write this as negative 2x plus y is equal to 3. I could I could manipulate it in ways where I get it to, and I'm not going to do it right now, but this is another way of writing that same thing. y minus 5 is equal to 2 times x minus 1. You could actually simplify this, and you could get either this equation here or that equation up on top. These are all equivalent. You can get from one to the other with logical algebraic operations. So there's an infinite ways to there's an infinite number of ways to represent a given linear equation. What I want to focus on in this video is this representation in particular, because this one is a very useful representation of a linear equation. And we'll see in future videos, this one and this one can also be useful depending on what you are looking for. But we're going to focus on this one. And this one right over here, it's often called slope intercept form. Slope, slope. Okay, so you guys should already have that in your notes so that today we're talking about slope intercept. slope intercept form. And before I explain that to you, let's just try to graph this thing. I'm going to try to graph it. I'm just going to plot some points here. So x, comma y. I'm going to pick some x values where it's easy to calculate the y values. So maybe the easiest is if x is equal to 0. If x is equal to 0, then 2 times 0 is 0. That term goes away, and you're only left with this term right over here. y is equal to 3 y is equal to 3. And so if we were to plot this, actually, let me start plotting it. So that is my y-axis. Let me do the x-axis. So that can be my x. Oh, that's not as straight as I would like it. So uh, that looks pretty good. All right. That is my x-axis. And let me let me mark off some hash marks here. So this is x equals 1, x equals 2, x equals 3. This is y equals, y equals 1, y equals 2, y equals 3. And obviously I can keep going, can keep going. This would be y is equal to negative 1. This would be x is equal to negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 so on and so forth. So this point right over here, 0, comma 3, this is x is 0, y is 3. Well, the point that represents when x is equal to 0 and y equals 3, this is, this is we're right on the y-axis. If they have a line going through it and this line contains this point, this is going to be the y-intercept. So one way to think about it, the reason why this is called slope-intercept form, is it's very easy to calculate the y-intercept. The y-intercept here is going to happen when it's written in this form. It's going to happen when x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 3. It's going to be this point right over here. So it's very easy to figure out the intercept, the y-intercept, from this form. And you might be saying, oh, well, it's a slope-intercept form. It must also be easy to figure out the slope from this form. And if you made that conclusion, you would be correct. And we're about to see that in a few seconds. Let's plot some more. What is the slope for this equation, um, Gavin? It's two. Good. Points here. And I'm just going to keep increasing x by one. So if you increase x by one, 
So we could write that our delta x, our change in x, delta Greek letter, this triangle's Greek letter delta represents change in, change in x here is 1. We just increased x by 1. What's going to be our corresponding change in y? What's going to be our change in y? So let's see, when x is equal to 1, you have 2 times 1 plus 3 is going to be 5. So our change in y is going to be 2. Let's do that again. Let's increase our x by 1. Change in x is equal to 1. So then if, we go from, if we're going to increase by 1, we're going to go from x equals 1 to x equals 2. Well, what's our corresponding change in y? Well, when x is equal to 2, 2 times 2 is 4 plus 3 is 7. Well, our change in y, our change in y is equal to 2. We went from 5. When x went from 1 to 2, y went from 5 to 7. So for every 1 that we increase x, y is increasing by 2. So for this linear equation, our change in y over change in x is always going to be our change in y is 2 when our change in x is 1, or it's equal to 2. Or we could say that our slope is equal to 2. And let's just, let's just graph this to make sure that we, we understand this. So when x equals 1, y is equal to 5. And actually, we're going to have to graph 5 up here. So when x is equal to 1, y is equal to, and actually this is a little bit higher. This, let me clean this up a little bit. So this one, let me erase that a little bit, just like that. So that's y is equal to 4, and this is y is equal to 5. So when x is 1, y is equal to 5. So it's that point right over there. So our line is going to look, you, you only need two points to define a line. Our line is going to look like, let me do this, this color right over here. Our line is going to look like, is going to look is going to look something like, is going to look, let me see if I can, I didn't draw it completely at scale, but it's going to look something like this. This is the line, this is the line, y is equal to 2x plus 3. We already figured out that its slope is equal to 2. Our change, our, when our change in x is 1, when our change in x is 1, our change in y is 2. If our change in x was negative 1, if our change in x was negative 1, our change in y is negative. Okay, did you guys see how to graph that? Right, our y-intercept was 3, so he put a point at 3, and he needed to find at least one more point. So he said, well, if I put 1 in for x, that gives me 2 times 1 is 2, plus 3 is 5, so y is 5. And he graphed that point, okay, and then made a line by connecting the two points. So you guys should be able to do that. So, so far today, I want you to be able to, if they give you M and they give you the y-intercept, I want you to be able to write the equation in slope-intercept form and also to graph that equation by graphing your y-intercept and one other point. Just pick something for X and figure out what Y would be. Okay? Two. And you can see that. If from zero, we went, we went down one, okay. we went to negative one, then what's our Y going to be? Two times negative one is... He doesn't have to keep graphing this many. You just need two points. Point one, or the point negative one, comma one, is on the line as well. So the slope here, our change in y or change in x, if we're going from, from between any two points on this line, is always going to be two. But where did you see two in this original equation? Well, you see the two right over here. And when you write something in slope-intercept form, where you explicitly solve for y, y is equal to some constant times x to the first power plus some other constant. The second one is going to be your intercept, your y, inter or it's going to be a way to figure out the y-intercept. The intercept itself is this point, the point in which the line intersects the y-axis. And then this 2 is going to represent your slope. And that makes sense, because every time you increase x by 1, you're going to multiply that by 2. So you're going to increase y by 2. Two. So this is just a kind of a, a get, get your feet wet with the idea of slope-intercept form, but you'll see, at least for me, this is the easiest form for me to think about what the graph of something looks like. Because if you were given another, if you're given another linear equation, let's say y is equal to negative x, negative x plus 2, well immediately you say, okay, look, my y-intercept is going to be the point 0, 2, so I'm going to intersect intersect the y-axis right at that point, 
and then I have a slope of, the coefficient here is really just negative 1. So I have a slope of negative 1. So as we increase x by 1, we're going to decrease y by 1. Increase x by 1, you're going to decrease y by 1. If you increase x by 2, you're going to decrease y by 2. And so our line is going to look something like this. Let's see if I can draw it relatively neatly. It's going to look something. It's, uh, let me, I can do it a little bit better than that. Because uh, my graph paper is hand-drawn. It's not ideal. But I think you get you get the point. It's going to look something like that. So from slope-intercept form, very easy to figure out what the y-intercept is and very easy to figure out the slope. The slope here, slope here is negative 1. That's this negative 1 right over here. And the y-intercept, y-intercept is the point 0, comma, 2. Very easy to figure out because essentially that gave you the information right there. Okay. So let me go back to you guys. All right. Does that make sense? A little. <laughs> A little bit. Okay. Um, then. Let's see if we can do some examples. Okay. So. Um, look in your book on page 171 and try to do A and B. Page 171, do A and B. 1A, one 1B. One Mrs. Palmer, I have a question. Okay. So, if it's like for number one, right? Mm -hmm. If y equals negative one half, would that be minus three or plus three? Because it's three is not a negative here. So it's plus. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. What problem are we doing? We're on page 171. We're doing problems 1A and 1B. Miss Palmer, for number 1A, um, you, after you set up the equation, then you have to do the, um, the table, right? Yes, because you have to find one other point. Okay, X, Y. Wait, I don't know if I'm doing this right. Okay, well, just do your best because we're going to go over these two. Okay, Karen. All right, number 1A. Write an equation in slope-intercept form. And then graph it. I'm going to see. Hopefully, you guys work on that. I'm going to see if my smart board will work at all. It's the first couple periods today. It really is not cooperating, but we'll see. Okay. 
Um, Nicholas, what did you write for 1A? My equation? Yep. I got y equals negative one half plus three. <laughs> okay, say that again. Y equals negative one half plus three. Okay, don't forget your x, negative one half x. Oh yeah, sorry, sorry. Negative one half x plus three. Okay, good. So that's part of it. Y equals mx plus b. So you filled in your m and your b. And now, see, this is what my computer's doing, and I don't know why. Um, now we have to graph it. Okay, so just draw a little graph. And we know the y-intercept is 3, so we know one point. We can go to our y-axis and place a point at 3. And now, oh. now we have to find another point, okay? So... Our y-intercept is when x is 0, y is 3. Yep, if I put in a 0 here and I figure out what y is, negative 1 half times 0 is 0, and 0 plus 3 is 3. I'm going to put in, I would like normally maybe put in a 1, but that's still going to give me a fraction. So I'm going to put in a 2. Because if I multiply negative 1 half times 2, that will get rid of my fraction. Okay? You could pick anything. You could pick. Oh, I picked one, and then you could pick one, but that'll give you negative one half plus three, so that'll be a positive two and a half. Mm -hmm. So I picked two just because if I fill in a two here, negative one half times two, that's negative one, and negative one plus three is two. So I also know I have the point two two. So I go to my graph and I go my uh, to the right two up two. And I have a can you just point, and I can draw my line. Oh, now it makes sense. Okay, and I can graph it. Okay, you guys have any questions? All right, go ahead and try 1B. We have the slope of negative 3. We have a y-intercept of negative 8. All right. My slope is negative 3. My y-intercept is negative 8. Um, Karen, what would the equation for that be? What, what are you going to write for 1b? Slope of negative 3, y-intercept of negative 8. Oh, no. Yeah, tell her what you wrote. I wrote negative y equals negative 3x squared minus 8. That's it. Good job. Y equals negative 3x and this time minus 8 because our y-intercept is negative 8. Okay. Sorry about how sloppy this is going to look. I don't know what's going on with my board. Okay. And they asked us also we have to graph this. So we'll draw a graph. Just draw a little one on your page. Okay. And we just need two points to make a line. So one of the points we know we have is negative 8. Okay, because that, that is our y-intercept. So when I see this, I know it crosses my y-axis at negative 8. So I'm going to go to negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Negative 8 is right here. That's the point 0, negative 8. If I put in a 0 for x, I would get negative 8 out for y. Uh, I'm going to put in, you can put anything in for x. I'm going to let um, Matthew Miller pick something. Matthew, are you with me? Can you just give me some number to put in? Just don't make it too big that it won't fit on my graph. Maybe, maybe you're not there. Um, seven. Oh, you are there. Good. Okay. I'm going to put in a seven for X. That is going to give me a really wide number. Seven. Um, it's going to give me something really big. Give me something a little bit. Smaller, no, I be able to two, fit that. Oh, and you left. Okay. 
Um, what if I pick two? Two. Yeah. That's gonna give me something pretty big, also, because if I well, yeah. one. I'm here. One. Um, I'll, I'll put in a negative two. How's that? If I put in a negative two, my y won't be that big. If I put in a negative two for x, negative three times negative two is a positive okay. six. Oh, yeah. Positive six minus eight is negative two. Okay. I really could use any of those numbers you said. Um, it's just my graph wasn't very big on here. But if I had like enough space, you could pick any number you want. So I'm going to pick negative two for x, and that gives me negative two for y. So I do negative two, negative two, graph that point, and draw my line. Okay. So all I want you to do tonight is some problems like that. Um, on page, page 174, numbers 1 to 4. Okay. okay. And you're going to be doing exactly what we just did here. Page 174, numbers 1 to 4. I like doing that. Okay. Yeah, this is not bad. I thought it was going to be really annoying and I was going to get really angry. Yeah. I mean, it'll get a little bit more complicated as we move on, but um, I want to make sure you have this down. So I'm looking forward to seeing you guys tomorrow and seeing your graphs for these four problems. Okay. All right. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay. Okay. I'll see you guys later. Bye. Bye bye. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye.